Hey guys, do you ever have trouble figuring out what form you want to make next? I feel like I made all the jars and bowls that I wanted to make last season on this channel. So I'm looking for something new to do this season so I don't end up doing the same thing over and over again. Nobody wants to watch that. So I'm looking for inspiration in the ancient Southwest. I'm looking for prehistoric things that I can make that'll be challenging and interesting for you to watch. So I've come up with 10 really great, unique forms from the prehistoric Southwest. And then I've got an idea. I'm gonna share those with you so that we can all be working on the same forms and then maybe share some of our successes and failures. So I picked out 10 really unique different forms that we can work on this year. And it's not about the order, so I'm not gonna do them in order. Uh, and you don't have to either if you wanna do that. And you don't have to do all 10. But if there's one of these that looks interesting to you, see if you can make it, then post the picture of your completed work on Instagram with the hashtag Ancient Pottery Challenge. And then I will share them on this channel. We can talk about maybe what went right, what went wrong. We can share some ideas uh, and just get inspiration from each other's work. And this isn't for wheel thrown pottery. This is for hand building. So look at these examples I'm gonna show you, get some ideas and then see if you can hand build these forms. So getting started on these forms, the first one is what's called a double jar. Up in the Mesa Verde region, it's sometimes called the double mug. The point is, they're connected. So it, there's two vessels. They're fairly small vessels, you know, maybe a, a pint, certainly no more than a quart. They're connected by a strap at the top, and then the vessels themselves are connected at the bottom, and that part at the bottom is hollow, so that if you pour liquid in one side, the level on the other side will rise. So make sure you connect them. That's the challenge. The way I would approach this is I would make two separate vessels on separate pookies, and then... Once they were firmed up a little bit, I would create that tube and connect them and the strap. In the examples I have here, uh, the first one is Coralitos Polychrome, which is from Casas Grandes region of northern Chihuahua. Uh, and then the second one is one of the Mesa Verde types from up in the Four Corners region. And then the next one is another Mesa Verde type. Once again, the Mesa Verde ones are more mug shaped. They're more like straight sided, uh, less globular. And then the fourth example is another one from the Casas Grandes region of Chihuahua. This is the main two areas where we find those forms in the ancient Southwest. Uh, and you know, just use this for inspiration. You don't have to have the same decoration. You can kind of get creative with it and go in a different direction, but see what you can do with this uh, double jar form. That's challenge number one, okay? The next challenge form that I have here is what's called in the Southwest an Oya. Now, in Spanish, olla just means jar, but in the Southwest, an olla is usually a large jar, a water jar most often. And that's what these Tularosa ollas that I have pictured here are. They're water jars. They have a small neck and, and a, a large capacity. These are at least a couple of gallons in size, I would say. And you have very small opening, so there's less likelihood of things going in there. They're easy to cover up, uh, not a lot of evaporation going on. That's challenge number two, the Oya. Okay, the third challenge I picked out is the bilobal form. So in this first picture, it's the one on the right. It's the, where a pot comes up, it's got the regular pot shape, and then it kind of comes in like it's gonna make a neck, and then it comes out again, bilobal. It's got two lobes. Uh, usually the top one is quite a bit smaller. So this is a form that you find in the Casas Grandes area, as well as the Salado area. And the examples I have here are all Salado. But uh, once again, don't worry about the decoration. It's just the form we're worried about, bilobal. The second one is a really good uh, profile shot. Uh, and then the third one, a little larger. The second lobe is, is quite a bit taller. The fourth one has a, a much is a large jar with a very small uh, bilobal neck. So that's uh, challenge number three, the bilobal jar. The fourth one is one I don't have a lot of pictures for. It's a, it's a rounded globular mug shape that is common in Maverick Mountain polychrome, Maverick Mountain black on red. I have two examples here. They're small. They're usually about, you know, this size, maybe a pint at the most. Um, they're rounded, whereas your Mesa Verde mugs are usually a little more vertically sided. Uh, these 
these Maverick Mountain mugs are, are round. They're globular. Uh, and the, the handle, you can't see it in this first picture. The handle's kind of turned around back. But the second picture, the handle's on the side. And you can see the handle doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the mug. It, it's just at the top. So it's like maybe a one finger or no more than like a two finger handle. Uh, it's not going to be super challenging, uh, but it should be fun. See what you can do with that uh, globular mug, uh, the round mug shape. Uh, that is common in the southern southwest as opposed to the mugs we usually see that are more traditional mug shape from the Four Corners region. Now challenge number five is probably the most challenging of all and that is the human effigy jar. These are very common in the Casas Grandes region but they're also found in other parts of the southwest. In fact human effigy jars are found all over the southwest. Uh, they're just most common in Casas Grandes. This first one is a Casas Grandes type. Uh, now, what you'll see in those is usually the body, the main portion of the jar is the body of the individual, and then maybe there's like a bilobal sort of thing for a head, maybe there's a secondary head on it, um, and usually uh, they have arms that are attached, that are close to the body in some way, so they're not, uh, you know, an appendage that's easily broken off, uh, noses, ears, once again, close to the form so they don't stick out too much and break off. Uh, they do not always have feet, so if you look at the second example, photo I have here. Uh, one has feet, or one has legs, the other does not. Um, and again, the, the arms are, are close into the body. Uh, and, and then the, the final example has legs and hands. Again, they're close to the body. Uh, the legs are close to the body too. The only thing that sticks out here really are um, like the hands and the feet. So if I was going to build one of these, I guess I'd build maybe kind of a bilobal jar and then um, you could press out some of the features like maybe a nose and such from the inside but a lot of the, like the arms and legs are then just coils that are attached. So use your creativity on this. I'd like to see what you can do with the human effigy form. This is going to be the most challenging of the uh, pots in these ideas. So moving on from that, we go to one that's a little easier, and this is called the culinary shoe pot. This is a, a type that's found all over the Southwest, uh, and it was used as a cooking jar. That's why they're almost never decorated. They're usually dark, have a lot of carbon deposits on them because they've been stuffed down in cooking fires. I once made one and brought it up to the field school and we actually cooked pasoli in it. The, the funny thing about that story is um, the, the students all enjoyed the pasoli that I cooked in the shoe pot and, and we had a lot of fun trying experimenting with how to cook with it and stuffing it down in the coals. Um, but when I brought it home, I set it on my workbench and went inside. I came out the next day and it was destroyed. Uh, the pot, apparently, you know, once I'd cooked in it, being earthenware, smelled like pasoli and the dog uh, got a hold of it, broke it, chewed bits of it up uh, so that you couldn't even glue it back together. So if you cook in your shoe pot, uh, and bonus points if you actually cook in your shoe pot, uh, be sure you put it someplace where your animals can't get a hold of it. I've got three photos here of uh, culinary shoe pots, all taken at Eastern Arizona College. And you can see uh, they're all pretty much the same design. Uh, some people call them duck effigies because they kind of have a body of a duck. Here's one that I have. This one was excavated and glued together by some ranchers in Arizona back in, I don't know, the 50s or 60s. And so they used um, Elmer's glue to glue it together and so some over the years some of the bits have come off that were glued on. I have the parts inside. I just need to uh, glue it together better at some point. So this is your culinary shoe pot. Uh, it's a very interesting shape and the most difficult thing about it I think is going to be the bottom because you can't form it in a regular pookie because the bottom is not round. It's more uh, like boat shaped and so what you're going to want to do is get a larger container Fill it with sand or ash or something that's kind of moldable and then with your hands kind of shape that boat shaped bottom. Then get a wet cloth and lay in it and then use that as your pookie build out of that. That way you have that boat shaped, that elongated bottom. So see what you can do with the culinary shoe pot. This would be a real challenge and extra fun because when you're done you can try cooking in it. And you can bury that pot right down in the coals with only the mouth sticking out. So give that a try. Okay, we're on the home stretch. Challenge number seven is a real rarity in the Southwest, but they are found, and especially in the Casas Grandes region, and that are these face pots. It's not a whole human effigy like the ones we looked at before. It's just a face, and usually there's a face on either side of the pot. This is an example that's at Cochise College uh, in the Sierra Vista campus. 
and it has a face on either side, like I said. And the next one is one I found online, and again, you can see there's a face, and then in the next picture, the same pot taken from the side, you can see there's a face on either end. The way I would approach this is I would just form a regular jar, and then while it was still damp and plastic, I would press out from the inside the features I want, the nose, forehead, chin, whatever features you want to emphasize. Uh, and then you can add, you know, little bits on the outside as well. So it shouldn't be super challenging, but should be a lot of fun. The Southwest Prehistoric Face Pot. Challenge number eight is the Duck Pot. Uh, you find a lot of these in Salado area. This first example is a really fine example of Gila Polychrome Duck Effigy Pot. This is at Princeton University. So you can find this example online. Uh, and then the next couple of pictures I have here were all taken at the Maxwell Museum in Albuquerque. Uh, and so you can see some other examples of this duck pot. Just form a regular jar and then I would, I would create a little head and attach it and then the same with the tail and then paint it. Uh, and once again, do not get too hung up on the decorations. You can decorate this however you want. You can glaze it. You can kiln fire it. Uh, just as long as it's hand built, uh, it's the form we're looking at creating the form by hand building. The next challenge, and I think we're on number nine now, yeah, is uh, the canteen. Now, if you look at southwestern canteens, you often see kind of a flattened shape, uh, and I've even seen cylindrical shapes that are made, you know, for tourist wear kind of thing. Uh, and that that is a more recent shape. I, I don't think I've ever seen one of those flattened canteens uh, from a prehistoric context. So these this is what canteens looked like prehistorically. Uh, they were globular, they were totally round, uh, and they had two little handles on the top. Very similar to the Oya we looked at in, I think, Challenge 2 or 3, uh, with the small neck and the globular form. Except, in this case, you've got the two handles at the top where you can attach straps. Uh, I've got several examples here, and if you look through them, you see that they're all pretty much the same shape. This is what most prehistoric canteens in the southwest, at least ceramic canteens, looked like. So, um... Give that a shot. It shouldn't be too hard. These aren't really big. These aren't like a gallon size. These are maybe a quart, you know, maybe at the top end, uh, two quarts, a half gallon. Uh, so keep them small uh, and get those handles attached really good so that it's functional and see if you can actually attach a strap. Bonus points for attaching a strap and actually carrying water in it. That would be great. So I can't wait to see what you come up with on the canteen because it's not difficult, but it is a challenge. And the final challenge is the ladle. Now, a ladle was a common form in the northern southwest, in Anazazi country. Uh, it was really in common use throughout the prehistoric period, but these are not super easy to make. Now, the bowl is just a small bowl. That's easy. Uh, but the handle, you don't want that big chunk of solid clay. Uh, for one thing, you could get air bubbles in there. You can have problems with it drying. The best way to deal with the handle is to make it hollow. So uh, either form it in as a tube or form it around something. Prehistorically, they would form it around a damp corn husks uh, so that then in the firing that would burn out and leave a hollow handle. Um, and some of these handles actually are created to rattle. So they have little balls of clay or pebbles inside. So when you move the ladle, you can hear and feel it rattling. So bonus points on the rattle handle. I'm going to try really hard to get that uh, rattle handle working. So see what you can do with the ladle. Uh, it, although it's it's a basic form, uh, it is quite challenging. And those are the 10 forms that I have today from the prehistoric Southwest. I think you'll really find these a lot of fun to try. And extra bonus points if you get all 10 of these done. But even if you just do one, share it on Instagram with us. Make sure you use the hashtag Ancient Pottery Challenge, and I will share them here on this channel uh, when we get a few of them in. And then I'm going to do all 10 over the course of this season. I might do one a month. I might do a couple a month. But over the course of the season, that is until maybe May or so uh, of next year, I will work on this and get these all done. And then we can talk about what worked, what didn't work, see what we can learn. Should be a lot of fun. I've created a page on my website with all these photos I've shared with you today. So you can go back and reference those as you work on this challenge. So. I'm putting the link to that in the description down below so you can access that. And make sure when you post those, you use the right hashtag so that we can all be on the same page and share from each other. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.